over six decades, Bank of Industry has been here. Driving Nigeria's industrial development through financial and business support services to micro enterprises, small and medium enterprises, and large enterprises across Nigeria. Leveraging on strategic partnerships, we provide equipment financing, working capital, and support to enterprises in key sectors of Nigeria's economy, including youth and women-led enterprises. Whatever your business needs, starting up, expansion, diversification, modernization, or rehabilitation, we'll be here always to support you. Bank of Industry, transforming Nigeria's industrial sector. Good evening and welcome to this week's episode of BOI Impact that is focusing on the Bank of Industry's support for Nigerian movie industry. This edition actually lends credence to the fact that the Bank of Industry handholds all willing, enthusiastic and potentially successful entrepreneurs to achieve their business dreams. I am Hadiza Oyeume. Some would argue that nothing has positively projected our dear country Nigeria, its people and culture to the world as much as its creative industry, from music to movies to fashion, art and other facets of the industry. Today we shall be featuring the story of a customer of the Bank of Industry, Jade Oshiberu, the CEO of Grill Studio, who years ago resigned her lucrative banking job to pursue her dream of becoming a movie producer without any idea of how she would achieve these lofty dreams until she was told about the Bank of Industry's laudable initiative for supporting the creative sector. Jade said without knowing anyone a couple of years ago, approached the Bank of Industry with her vision, and like they say, the rest is history. Today, Jade has become a world-class movie producer. She is also a licensed Amazon distributor who has produced many blockbuster movies such as Sugar Rush, Isoke, Gang of Lagos, and Brotherhood that won five awards at the recently held African Magic Viewers Choice Awards 2023. The BOI Impact crew had an interview with Jade during which she took us down memory lane on how she was able to access three different facilities from the Bank of Industry and the inspiration behind all her movies. Don't go away. Grow Limited is a film and content production company with a vision to become a powerhouse media company at the forefront of African storytelling through cost-efficient but high quality and groundbreaking cinema content. How much do you say they inside Bullion Vang? Bullion Vang, they carry 20 to 100 million. You go run them like military mission. Heavy presence. A lot of people won't die. Hey, 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 in 2014, uh, I was just leaving my job at a bank uh, in Capricorns and I wanted to make a film called It's Okay. So I actually applied for the Nollywood Fund uh, with the BOI because mm -hmm. I've been looking for funding for a long time, couldn't find funding. Somebody told me they saw it was one of my headbands, saw an article in the newspaper about the Nollywood Only Fund. Um, and so I applied, I went, made the first film called It's Okay, and that's, that was the birth of uh, Greer. So the fund just started, and I mm -hmm. think at the time there were just, first of all, there was a lot of people who were applying, and okay. a lot of them, it was my own first film, but people like Kulea Falayo and then Song, there were a lot of names that were more established. So tell us a bit about Isoke. How did it come up with that concept, and how was the um, post production and even the sales after? Great. Right. Um, it's okay for me at the time I was in my early 30s I was not married I had broken up an engagement because uh, I and everybody in my family my mom has about seven sisters so a very big tribe of women all telling you this is how life should be and you should get married and all these things and they thought I was crazy for breaking up my engagement at 29 so that was the inspiration for the story what, what would it, what's it like for a 34 year old accomplished woman who's not married in a Nigerian society yes I'm 34. 
and two of my younger sisters are married. No, I don't have a boyfriend. And no, I'm not going to kill myself. I am freaking fine. The post-production process, uh, I was lucky at the time. Again, because it was my first film and I had a lot of friends that I had been collaborating with. So a lot of it was collaborative. A lot of my friends pitched in. I had friends who were editors, who were sound engineers, who were this, who were that. So was, I had a lot of people help me. It's not to say I didn't pay, but I paid a very subsidized amount because it was my first film and a lot of them were just willing to help out. Um, and then we went on to distribute the film uh, at the cinemas. At the time, <laughs> we weren't sure what to expect, I'll be honest, especially because we released in June. Mm -hmm. um, there was The Rains. Uh, a week after release, AY also released the film. The Mummy or something. There were a number of Hollywood films that came out that period as well. So it was a lot of competition. So we really didn't know how it was going to perform. The competition with the outside, they very tight. This is Rene. Oh, good evening, ma. Uh, she's married. <laughs> and this is Isoka. Uh, this is my son, Osase. I think because of the strength and the word of mouth of the film itself, and also we had Silverbird as a distributor, they really stood behind the film. Um, it went on to gross almost 100 million at the time, which luckily I think I had only borrowed 35 million, I think, from the oh, BOI. Wow. Yeah, so it just paid back the BOI loan. Okay. Um, and so everything else that we made from the film in airlines and, um, and uh, sponsorship and everything else became at least profit for the project, yeah. So BOI was the only formal institution mm -hmm. that gave us money. Okay. There was a lot, there was more money on the side from like family, my own savings, oh, okay. my parents, things like that. Because the entire budget at the time of it was about 50 million. Okay. So uh, there was still a portion to recoup. And we spent quite a bit on marketing as well because we premiered in the UK. We did, I, I felt like I needed to make a lot of noise because I was an unknown filmmaker at the time. Mm -hmm. So I needed to position the film properly. Um, I, I did learn a lot of lessons because in order to recoup all those expenses as well, it took some time. We, uh, the, the thing about uh, films is when you, whether it's cinemas or anywhere else, uh, online, all these things, typically your film is showed before you earn money. You know, the producer is the last to <laughs> collect money. Yeah. They, people don't really pay up front for your project. Mm -hmm. So it took us about two years to completely like recoup the entire, all the, the money we invested in the film and to turn a profit. Let me ask you, those small mathematics, <laughs> okay? What is 800,000 times 360? Mm. 280 million. Oh, wow. $800,000. When we made Isoke and even um, Sugar Rush, Netflix was the only one in the market at the time. Okay. Um, and in fact, for Sugar, for It's Okay, it took, I think we premiered on Netflix about a year and a half after we left the cinemas. It took such a long time mm -hmm. to get on, on, on Netflix. Um, so when we were making Gangs, because Gangs was such, because Gangs of Lagos was made before Brotherhood. It was actually shot before Brotherhood. When we were making Gangs, we knew because of the scale and the ambition that we didn't want to go to cinemas because it costs quite a lot of money. and. The Nigerian cinemas are growing, but it's still quite limited. We only have about 100 screens in the entire country. Um, and so we knew that we couldn't recoup our investment in Nigeria alone. Uh, our plan was always we find a global platform uh, because we thought this was a film that had to release globally, you know, for Nigerians in diaspora, Africans in diaspora, people of African descent, anybody around the world who might be curious about the Nigerian experience. Um, so we weren't sure, I'll be honest, who would buy it. We didn't even know that Amazon was coming into the market. It was just that whilst we were shooting, we were also publicizing the project online. So we would post our behind the scenes pictures and videos just to show that we are shooting something here and it's a little different. And so we had some inquiries come back. We had both Netflix and Amazon actually inquire about the project, oh, yes. Um, and Amazon luckily was entering into the market at the same time mm -hmm. as when we were wrapping up our shoot. Um, and so, they're the ones who actually said, look, um, can we see a clip of this? Can we see this? And when, when both parties watched it, there was a lot of interest in the film. And, and luckily, they, I think for them, it was a good fit um, for them to announce their presence in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Uh, but then we went on to then produce Brotherhood that did well at the box office. So they licensed Brotherhood as well. Because uh, at the time, they were talking to me about a bigger deal. They're like, look, Jadu, we see what you're doing here. And we want to sign you for the next three years to produce content for us exclusively in this market. And so for them, I think 
licensing brotherhood was also important to show that okay this is this person's work is you know we're the home for Chadi's work and so brotherhood was like a soft launch for the arrival of gang <laughs> There's a strong desire to make really great films. Um, and then there's a strong respect of the audience. Um, as excited as I am to make films, I also hold the audience in high esteem. I don't just want to do anything and just brag, 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 get out there. It's not, I respect the art of filmmaking. I love filmmaking. I've loved filmmaking since I was a child. I always say I was an only child for a long time. I was an only child for nine years. And so films were my primary um, companion. And so for me, um, I understand the, the, the impact of what films can do for people in terms of the mind. Next to music, you know, it's, it's really uh, films. And so I think a mixture of those two things, I mean, there's God factor, there's the, you know, talent, God, you know, all these other factors. But I think consistently we're deliberate. I'm deliberate about um, telling stories that I care about and respecting the audience as well. So if you continue to do the hard work, prepare. When it's time for opportunities, they meet you prepared. So Amazon could have been coming into the market, but if I, we didn't make gangs if, of Lagos, we didn't prepare for it. Mm -hmm. Because at the time when we prepared, we didn't know that that was where it was going to go. Wow. It wasn't as though I had any magic ball. I didn't, I, in fact, I always tell people that on our deck, we had international superstar names there that we we'll, maybe if we get one of them, we send it to them. Mm -hmm. Like in John Boyega, if he sees it, he can help us sell it. Sell because it. we didn't think that anybody in Nigeria could sell it for us. You know, We thought we would need an international EP to sell it. But luckily, the work itself sold itself as well. The people behind the work, the energy, the you know, actors, everybody. The, I think the work became evident, and so the film sold itself. You also have to be looking at timing, where you are. I always tell people that work with me that, for me, it's very important that we are staying at least five to ten years ahead of the industry. We're trying to aim. We're not just you know, doing stuff that is being done currently. We're also trying to push a bit. Brotherhood got 11 nominations at the AMBCAs. I got four nominations because um, there's another film called The Trade, uh, which I wrote and directed and produced a few years ago, but just released recently. It stars Blossom. It's on, it's on Amazon as well, funny enough. Um, and so I, I got some nominations for that. I got some nominations for Brotherhood as well. Looking at the fact that you're a young lady doing so well in your chosen field, how would you describe your relationship with the Bank of Industry? And um, if there's any ingredients of the Bank of Industry being part of your success? Oh, absolutely. So I think, first of all, my, I've borrowed from the Bank of Industry three times now. In fact, I'm about to borrow the fourth, the fourth time. Um, I think if this fund didn't exist, the, the Nolly Fund, I, I'm not really sure where I would have found a lot of the funding, even to start up my journey, you know. I, I got the Bank of Industry loan in 2016. 2016, I literally was just leaving my job. Seven years later, you're arriving at an office that we are, you know, calling Grill Studios. <laughs> we have full time, we probably have around 10 employees. We have some people who are freelance who work with us as well. Um, more than that, I now have a three-year deal with Amazon Studios that is going to really, really change, not just the company, but actually the industry. Promise George is the group head, creative and digital group at the Bank of Industry. He tells us more about why BOI has continued to support Grill Studios. We have success stories across 25 films that actually benefited from BOI's Nolly Fund uh, product program. Okay, so um, Grill was actually one of those films. Girl walked into BOI as a fresher. She hadn't done any film before. That's Daddy Osibero. She hadn't done any film before. So BOI was a starting point. The first production was uh, Isoka. And Isoka did mass massively well to the extent that Girl was able to pay on record time. And then she came back, you know, 18 months after to access fund for Sugar Rush. Sugar Rush also did extremely well. Of course, the cinematic film did extremely well. And she paid before record time. The third time she came back, you know, she got money for Brotherhood, right? Brotherhood also did extremely well. She paid on record time, right? So now she's back for the fourth time. For us, she's a classic example of a customer that has character. In the, under the content production or the film production, she's one of the, you know, um, you know one of the uh, classical customers that has done so well in that area. So in terms of the success story of Glow, BOI is actually a critical partner when it comes to that. 
The Nigerian movie industry tagged Nollywood is globally recognized as the second largest producer of films in the world. It is one of the key sectors identified under Nigeria's economic recovery and growth plan, which was why the Bank of Industry strengthened its creative industry desk to ensure that the sector is well supported. Creative and the digital industry group is more focused on creative and digitally you know, driven businesses and those offerings are as follows. Now we're looking at entertainment and uh, entertainment infrastructure. Of course, without infrastructure, you can't actually you know, drive an industry. So if you have that infrastructure, it can actually deepen your contribution within that sector. So we have the entertainment um, 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 infrastructure, and then we also have uh, um, recreational you know, parks, and then we have the mixed use, where you have entertainment hub, or what we call the creative hub. That creative hub, you can actually have a production center, a post-production studio, you can have all kinds of creative entertainment uh, segment within one similar hub, but that is one. Now the second one is uh, we have art and craft. Of course, art and craft has to do with theatrical production. You have the theater, the theater in its production to actually power the theater. So we also fund that too. You know, apart from the theater, you see the visual art, you see the photo galleries, you see different kind of galleries comes under the art and craft. And then the third one has to do with the media communication. Now media communication has to do with the broadcast, you know, have the broadcast stations, the TV and the radio platforms. You also have the out of home advertising, the billboard, the LED billboard, and then you have uh, communication infrastructure, you know, under that segment. And then the fourth segment has to do with the digital itself, the digital and the creative technology, which has to do with animation, has to do with, you know, fashion design technology. In fact, to put it in one word, digitally driven business is the digital side of creative industry. We feel it's important because of how critical it is, talking about the fintechs too, talking about you know, um, digital financial services, talking about whatever you have even in the manufacturing, once it's digitalized or anything you have in the creative or other sectors, right? Once you bring in digital, digitalization of that particular enterprise, it comes into the digital form. And BUI is already doing a lot in that, in that sector. My own dream and my vision for BUI is that we continue to make, and in fact, we grow into making films that project Africa, the African experience, the African lifestyle, the African um, traditions, culture on a global scale. That's really my own dream for real. Just last week, we organized a training for producers, uh, a one week intensive training where I brought in somebody, I had shot in South Africa last year, so I brought in somebody from South Africa who had trained with us. I did some of the training. Another colleague of mine did some of the training to properly, because a lot of people who work in the industry fell into the role, they just started, just you know, started working on set. Most people aren't properly trained, um, even as producers, because you know, it's just, uh, you can organize, quickly come. And so we were properly training them on legal organization, you know, all the elements of producing, um, pay, all the paperwork, all the leadership, all those things, right? This is just as a leader, because for us, we need to prepare for all the work that we are going to do with Amazon. So we need to upskill very quickly because the expectations are also high. Amazon has also been talking about insurance because they are used to insuring projects as they are shooting. So the impact generally on the entire industry of this sort of deal as well, of, it's, it's immeasurable. It has changed the life of so many people who are working with me. It has changed the life of actors, someone like Toby Bakary, for instance. Yes, he went on Big Brother. But he didn't really see himself as this sort of actor. Mm -hmm. He was in Sugar Rush, mm -hmm. then Gangs of Lagos, mm -hmm. then Brotherhood, and now he's the biggest action star. <laughs> like, it has changed so many people's lives. It has changed, like by extension, you know, Olaro Timi, who's in the film, who was in theatre, he plays Kazim in Gangs of Lagos. It has changed his life completely. It's changing the industry. It's changing the lives of the practitioners within the industry. It's changing the economy, their own families as well. It's also changing the kind of talent we're attracting to the industry as well. Because as I said, a lot of people just fell into this. Because also it didn't seem like the most profitable career. Some people who might have been passionate and want to join it, their parents, people will discourage them. Like, what are you going to go and do there? How much are they making? Better go and work in the bank. Mm -hmm. But now it looks like an honorable job to have. And so we're attracting even talented people who might have gone to other careers are coming into Nollywood as well. So your twin brother is an ex-convict. I came from the exact same streets. I chose to be a better man. In terms of the impact, let me also analyze that one film can generate as much as 50 to 100, you know, uh, employment.
immediate employment and it cuts across sectors. So it has cross-sectoral impact when you produce one film because you're going to see the photographers there, you need a videographer there, you need a cast and crew, and then you need even the, the technologies, you need, you need in virtual, even the hospitality comes into play. So it is one industry that brings other industries you know, um, to, 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 together. And that's one of the impacts that you can say that BUR has actually affected you know, through the content uh, production you know, financing strategy of BUR. So for a JADE, one film alone can, can actually generate you know, more than 100 uh, immediate employment. And she's done four. So if you multiply that, you can actually you know, guess the number. But beyond Grow, there are other films, like 20, 24 films too, right, that are also going to the market. When I was applying for the loan, I didn't know anybody. Um, in, in fact, I think some people got theirs quicker than mine, and, and who also didn't know anybody because they, because I, I resisted the paperwork a bit because I was just like, what is this? What are we accessing that we are using two pages of paperwork? But also, that's what, what I was saying about training. When you are formalizing, you realize that a lot of paperwork is necessary for you know legal tax all of these things right once you get used to that i don't know that i would necessarily have had the career that i have maybe i would have been making small small films or whatever but the level of ambition that i've taken on my projects if the boi fund didn't exist for nollywood um, uh, my career wouldn't exist as it is if i'm being frank there are those who had a testimony testament today of saying that they walked into bank of industry without knowing anybody so walk into Bank of Industry, the officers or the relationship managers are ready to guide you. We have a template, we have a questionnaire, we have a checklist, where you find very complicated to understand. Of course, we'll put you through. Once you're able to meet that minimum requirement, of course, access to funds wouldn't be a problem to you. Nigerians can be rest assured that the Bank of Industry will continue to support their creative project. Here is what the MDBOI, Mr. Ulika Edekpito, has to say. For us as a bank of industry, we are helping uh, to move the country into, the, into what we believe is the way the world is going. We are happy that we are fulfilling part of our mandate. And for Nigeria as a country, I believe in a couple of years, what we are seeing here, starting small, we add to Nigeria's GDP. You heard it all from Daddy Oshiberu, whose blockbuster movies, Isoke, Sugar Rush, Brotherhood and Gangs of Labors, have won several awards that have made her one of the most sought after names in Nollywood and beyond. To think that she didn't have fun to turn her dreams to reality until she came to BOI is a pointer that you can also dream big and achieve your dreams. Having recognized the crucial role the creative industry is playing in terms of jobs and wealth creation in Nigeria, and to also complement its activities in terms of giving financial and technical support, the Bank of Industry continues to support the industry in ensuring that it competes favorably in the global market. Why not be like Jadi or Shiberu by taking that bold step today? She's indeed an embodiment of the can-do spirit of the Nigerian youth. It is on this note that we we'll conclude this week's edition of the program. It's good evening and have yourself an enterprising week. I am Hadiza. Uyumi. Bye for now.